The Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. Celebrating a little strike I just made. Huh? Strike? Huh? <laughs> uh oh. I guess my money's no good, fella. <laughs> hey! Will you get a load of them britches? Look at them moccasins, too. What are you doing, boy? You play an engine or something? Huh? That's a mighty fancy toad sticker you got there. Aren't you afraid you cut yourself with such a big knife? Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. That's mighty fancy. Let me have a look at Son, you run along and get your nails, huh? Well, I've only got a nickel. Well, you can put the nails in my account. Oh, and uh, what about the nickel? Oh, you're not going to buy any more peanut brittle, Mark. Not while you've still got a half a bag left. Hey! <laughs> Let's see. Now, we have a frying pan and a fork and spoon. That comes to 60 cents altogether. Morning, Myrtle. Well, hello, Mark. I'll be with you in just a minute. Just as soon as I finish with this customer. Now, what was it you wanted, Mark? Uh, well, there's some, uh, nails. Nails? What kind? Ten penny? Eight penny? Finishing nails? Shingle nails? Uh, ten penny. For my chicken coop. Ten penny. How many? Uh, two pounds and a door latch. Pounds of ten penny nails and an all weather latch. That'll be forty cents. Oh, Paul said I could sign. Thank you, Myrtle. Be sure and say hello to your pa, Mark. a swell looking knife you've got. I've never seen a knife quite like that one before. 
Want some peanut brittle? It's real good. What's the matter? Can't you talk? <laughs> I wish I could do that. Oh, I almost forgot. My name's Mark. What's yours? You got a sore throat? You mean... you can't talk? Sorry. Me? Right? Well, can I write? Oh, well, sure. Can you? Can I write? Can I write my brand? Yeah. Oh, my name. Me write my name. Oh, sure. Yeah. town for a while. Maybe we could meet and and I could teach you a little writing and you could teach me how to throw a knife. Let's see. I've got to fix the chicken coop tomorrow. How about Saturday morning? Mark? Mark, come on, son. We got to get going. Coming, Paul. Well, I've got to go now, Mark. It's been nice meeting you. Well, I'll meet you here Saturday morning, all right? Mark. Come in, Paul. So long, Mark. Who are you talking to, son? That was Mark. Mark? That's his name, only he can't talk. He showed me a scar on his throat. Must have had an operation on his voice or something. Oh. What's his last name? I don't know. I haven't seen him around here before. Neither have I. I met him at the store. I'm going to meet him Saturday morning, teach him how to write. That's a very fine thing to do, son. He's real nice. Mm -hmm. What about the harness? Well, it wasn't finished. Be ready Monday. As good a time as any to even things up. Uh. 
You... You get out of town. Far and fast. If you don't, I'll find you and cut you down to nothing. Son. With my friend Mark. He took me up to the place where he's camped. Oh. See if you can get her that fifth wheel, will you? All right. It must be awful to be alone, Paul. Well, I guess it is, but just the same, I don't think you should go traipsing off with him without telling me. We don't know too much about him. Well, he told me a lot about himself today. Of course, it's kind of hard to understand sometimes. But today he told me how he lost his voice. The, the Indians killed his parents when he was a little boy. He took him away with him. Well, he said he was awful scared, and that he was so scared he couldn't learn to talk their language. Well, they thought that, that he was only being stubborn or something. So they cut out his voice so he wouldn't be able to talk at all. Then he told me something else. He said that since the knife cut out his voice, well, he'd have to let it talk for him. You can let it down now. Mark, why don't you go out and invite your friend here for supper? I'd like to meet him. I knew you would. I think he'd like to meet you, too. I told him a lot about you. You did, huh? Well, look, when you get your other chores finished, why don't you ride back to his camp and bring him here? By the time you get back, I'll have supper ready. All right. I'll be back by sundown. <laughs> Care for another piece of pie, Mark? Well, I don't have to ask this Mark if he wants another piece. His middle name is Pie. Well, I can't help it if Pa's such a good cook. Fact is, I think Pa missed his calling. <laughs> You've been having yourselves quite a time out at your camp on Millis Creek. Reminds me of my younger days back in the nations. My friends and I used to go camping every chance we got up in the Ozarks. That's when I got my education in camp and know-how from the masters, the Cherokees. I know, Marx told me of your treatment by the Indians. That's a shame, son. It's a shame. Nobody can blame you for feeling the way you do. Right now, you're full of bitterness and hatred, but you can't let that knife speak for you the rest of your life. Now, even though you got hurt real bad, there's still a lot of things you can do to help yourself. One of the best is to get an education. Now, I know a special school in Denver would be just right for you. It's pretty expensive, might cost as much as $500 tuition, but you could earn your way by getting a job. As a matter of fact, I'd be mighty glad to help you get started. What do you say? Mark, I tried to show you I was your friend. You just don't seem to know what the word friend means. Mark! Mark, come back! Now let him go, son. Who shouldn't have talked to him like that? Well, what should I have said? Thanks for breaking a bow that meant a great deal to me? I don't mean that. You just shouldn't have lost your temper. I lost my temper? Oh, not exactly. But you sure bowled him out. Well, maybe I did. But only because I was thinking of him. You see, son, a lot of times people can't help doing things they know are wrong. But when they find out they can't get away with it, well, way down inside, they feel better. I think I know what you mean. Well, now, since I did the cooking, how about you doing the dishes? All right. Mark, 
Come here, son. I think it might be a good idea if tomorrow morning you rode back to your friend's camp. I think he'll be wanting to see you. Thanks, Paul. you to leave. And I'm glad you did. Because I've got a lot of even enough to do. Now you take that throat sticker and throw it down on the ground. And you do it real easy like. I'm going to enjoy what's coming. What's the matter with you? Look, I'm getting tired of talking and getting no answers. Now throw down that knife. For the last time, throw it down. I'm talking to you, answer me! What is it? Are you a dummy or something? time he's jumped me. I ought to be locked up or something. He's an animal. What did you do to make him act like that? You must have said or done something. I didn't do nothing. He wouldn't answer me when I talked to him. He just asked him if he was a dummy, that's all. Mr. McGowan, he can't talk. That's why he got mad. Shouldn't have called him that. Mark! Mark! the life out of McGowan? Yep, right over there. I thought he'd turn purple and bust. A boy like that. After all he's gone through, he's got a lot of hate built up inside. He could explode like a keg of powder if he's pushed too far. Yeah, but he shouldn't have talked to him like that. Well, he shouldn't have, son. But knowing McGowan, I'm inclined to think he did more than talk to him. Well, it doesn't look like your friend's coming back for a while. He might have gone into town. Let's go. I've got to see John Hamilton anyway. north of here in the little canyon. I slowed down to take them curves, and all of a sudden, there was this fellow on top of my coach. Well, that was the slickest operation I ever saw. He just appeared out of nowhere and landed on the coach, and carrying a big knife. He made Harv stop the coach, then made us throw our guns down, and then he motioned to Harv to open the box. Yeah, and then he took the money. But what beats me is why he just took $500. $500? But he can't be too far away yet. We, we opened him up all the way into town. What do he look like? I never got a good look at him. He stayed behind us all the time. But he had the wickedest looking knife I've ever seen. Oh, and another thing, he never said nothing. Not a word. Just let that knife do all the talking for him. Looked like he was wearing buckskin breeches and engine shoes. That sounds like the hothead who pulled into town yesterday. First he held a knife on me in the saloon and he jumped me out here in the street. I knew he was real trouble all along. Which way do you ride, Harp? Up on the hills toward Miller's Creek. I know where he's camped. I'll take a couple of men and we'll bring it back. No, you won't, McGowan. You'll stay right where you are. What say you got in this, McCain? With the marshal out of town, this is a matter for the city council. And speaking for them, McGowan, we don't want you handling our law. Uh, you're right, Lucas. We'll form our own posse and go after him. Look, Mike, I know that boy. He doesn't strike me as an outlaw. We go gunning for him, we'll push him into being one. I've got a hunch why he hit the stage. And I think if I talk to him, I can bring him and your $500 back if I'm alone. All right, Lucas, go ahead. Thanks, Mike. You stay here, son. I'll be back soon.
Mark? Mark, it's Lucas McCain. I'm here to harm you, I'm sure you know that. But I don't expect you to harm me. I came here to talk to you as a friend. Now, I think I know why you hit that stage today. But you can't strike back at the whole world because of what happened between you and McGowan. Or what happened between you and those Indians. Don't let the worst kind of people warp your judgment. Now, you've had long talks with my son. And I'm proud to call him my son. You know what a fine boy he is. Don't destroy his faith in you. He thinks you're a fine, decent person he'd like to call a friend. I want him to keep thinking that way. Well, let's you and I take that $500 back where it belongs. I'll try to make him see your side of it. Good news, Lucas. The manager of our Denver office says he'll be willing to watch over the boy while he serves his probationary period. Is that all, Mike? In addition, he says he'll be able to get a job up there to help pay for his schooling. Young man, you owe a great debt of thanks to Mr. McCain. Oh, he doesn't have to thank me, Mike. It was his turn to get a fair break. certain long-legged young doggy has taught him the meaning of friendship. You ought to get along just fine, son. <laughs> 